Welcome to Ever Leather. Now try saying that three times fast. Just kidding. Anyway, so we're here to make a van brace. It protects your forearm from the wrist to the elbow. Some people call that a bracer, but uh, bracers, I believe, are a little bit shorter and more of an archery thing. The first thing you will need is a pattern. If you watched my previous video and made your own, you might have something like what's here on the left. If not, you could also go to my Etsy shop and buy this very uh, wolf pattern. It's, it's better than the one here in the video. Punch out all of the holes. Yes, all of them. For the big holes, which are eyelets, I used a 3 16 inch punch, and the small stitching holes, I just used the smallest thing I could find. Use 10 ounce for the best results. You don't want it to be too thin or it won't keep its shape. If you're using regular paper and not cardstock, which would be nicer, then I recommend putting weights on the paper so that it doesn't move around. Here I'm using Amiibos, but I don't recommend that, I'm just doing it for fun. What you use to trace with, uh, be it a pen, pencil, scratch all, that's just up to you, whatever you think works best. Here I'm using eyeliner, because there was an eyeliner pen next to my pen, and I grabbed it on accident and didn't realize it until the video was done. It is extremely important that you mark the holes accurately, because they're going to have to match up later, so be very careful. Always drop your blade, sharpen your blade. It's a safety thing as well as an accuracy thing. It's just always do it, make it a habit. Cutting 10 ounce leather is no easy thing and it can also be dangerous. So I recommend never cutting towards yourself. Also cut slowly and don't be afraid to cut multiple times. Just, it, you don't have to get it in one pass. If you have curvy, difficult to cut lines in your pattern, then you should cut it off from the main hide. You don't want to have to keep rotating a giant pair of cow shoulders around. When you have a rounded edge, sometimes it helps to make a bunch of small cuts. Next we strop our edge beveler. The edge beveler is indeed a blade, so it needs to be sharpened. Bevel all of the edges, taking special care around the corners because we want them to be rounded a little bit. Let's get the back side as well. Sand the edges with a fine paper, like 500 grit, and be especially thorough with the corners. Use a wet foam brush or sponge or something to dampen all of the edges, and then use an edge slicker to make them nice and smooth. Don't slick your edges this way, I'm only doing it for camera, so find something flat to put your leather on. Here we are again with a 3 16 inch hole punch for the eyelets. Next, I'm going to use a leather stitching chisel for the small holes. This part takes time, and it can get a little tedious, but trust me, stitches look way better than just glue. I like to add a stitching group to the patch. It adds a little decorative flourish, and also helps the stitches lay better. This is an optional step. I'm just using a scratch all to open up all the little stitch holes a bit better. Wet that foam brush again because we are going to dampen the leather for carving. Use a round tip stylus tool to trace all of the lines on your pattern to your leather. Now it's time for some carving with our swivel knife. And since it's a knife, we have to strop it. Next, we're gonna spend hours tooling the leather, or do that. 
it's time to die. The leather, so make sure you have a clean workspace and wear gloves, because this stuff stains bad. I'm using a gel antique on this patch here. You can use whatever you want. And I'm being lazy and just using my finger. Don't allow the antique time to dry. You want to wipe it off right away. And if you want to take off more color, as in make it lighter and less dark, then you can dampen with water whatever material you're using to wipe it off with. Once your dyes and antiques are dry, then you'll want to buff them with a soft, clean cloth. It is time to finish. I'm gonna use Super Sheen. So what you want to do is get a foam brush or sponge and get it wet and then put a little bit of Super Sheen on it. Don't put too much because when you put it on, like I'm, I'm using too much, when you put it on you don't want to have any streaks. So that's why I like to turn the brush on its side and try and, try and spread it around as much as possible. Allow the finish to dry for a couple of hours, then buff it again. Now it's time to add some optional hardware. I'm putting eyelets in these holes. I think they're also known as grommets. I'm not sure what the difference is between them. I just know that these ones are called eyelets. And what they're used for is to reinforce the hole in the leather so you can put lace through it, you can tie it to things and not worry about the hole tearing or ripping. I ran into a little problem here because the holes I made for the eyelets are smaller on the back side than they are in the front. So what I did is I took the wood slicker, which is normally for edges, and I kind of mashed it through the hole and made it like a little bit bigger, and you know, without actually cutting the leather, just kind of stretching it a little bit, and it worked great. So close to being done, this is actually my favorite part, stitching, even though it's probably the most annoying part, it's just so neat seeing all the pieces come together. Anyway, this is a saddle stitch, so what you do is you have one piece of thread with a needle on each end of it. Then you put it through your first hole, and each subsequent hole after that, you sort of put both needles in the same hole and then pull them out of opposite sides of each other. It's a really strong stitch. It's, it's almost like doing two stitches at once, but well, it is like doing two stitches at once. Anyway, I love it, go for it. Tie a knot, cut it, burn it, and then hit it. Yeah, flatten it. Optional step, add some gum trag tra 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 Now for the scary part. You're going to submerge your beautiful finished piece into hot water. You will see bubbles coming out of it. That is normal. So here's the thing about the leather and the water. It causes all of the colors to darken a little bit. So be aware of that. You're gonna to wanna to leave it in for about five minutes so that it really soaks into the whole thing and it doesn't darken unevenly. Finally, form the leather to your arm and add any kind of bends and flourishes that you want. When it dries, it will be pretty hard and it will keep its shape. And that's it, you're ready for battle. Thank you so much to Ready for the awesome music. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of stuff. You can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, Etsy. Yeah, check out my Etsy shop. The pattern for this Van Brace is there, and soon there will be more stuff on there as well. Thanks again, bye-bye.